Craigers coming up. Good afternoon. Um, there's several folks that are coming into the room. Before I begin with a very brief uh, statement, um, you know, a, a life was lost in downtown Wheeling today, and despite the circumstances, uh, you know, our condolences go out to family members there. At approximately uh, 2:43 p.m. this afternoon, multiple law enforcement agencies and officers responded to the area of the federal building on Chapman Street to report of someone in the parking lot across from the federal building discharging a firearm. Responding officers engaged the gunman who was continuing to discharge that firearm. Um, that person was incapacitated by the gunfire from a wheeling police officer as well as a court security officer who responded from across the street at the federal building. Due to the location of this incident, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is assuming the lead on this very complex criminal investigation. This investigation is very fluid, and I will not be entertaining any questions at this time related to motive or anything otherwise. Uh, the Wheeling Police Department, Ohio County Sheriff's Department, West Virginia State Police, and many other federal uh, and even local law enforcement agencies are contributing multiple resources and will be throughout the remainder of the um, the only other thing that I wanted to stress um, a little over two hours after this incident is that there are no remaining threats in Wheeling. Uh, people are safe. It appears that this gunman was alone. Um, there will be some road closures that remain downtown, particularly in the area of the federal building. And certainly vehicles within the crime scene uh, will not be accessible for some time, most likely overnight. We will have another press conference this evening at 8 p.m. at this location, and at that point we may be able to answer some additional questions, but at this time, I'll try to answer some questions, but I promise you I'm not gonna go into great detail about motive or anything else. Chief, what about a name? The name Maybe has well. been, been out in some media outlets. It's been confirmed, uh, I believe, by the U.S. Attorney that it was a former Wheeling police officer. Um, that is, in fact, true. I am not, at this time, gonna release a name. Would you, would you deny Thomas Picard is the right name? I'm not going to give any information on a name. I will confirm that the person believed to be responsible is a former Wheeling police officer, resigned in July of 2000. Other questions? Any fatalities, Chief? Other than the gunman, no. Was a security guard, a federal security guard hit? I, I do not know that at this time. What weapon was used? I'm not going to when you say an assault-style rifle, is that an AK-47, Kalashnikov, or are we talking an AR-15? I don't remember. I don't remember saying any type of weapon, and I'm not going to get into that at this point. The Associated Press was saying an assault-style weapon. Can you confirm that? I'm not going to go into anything else about the, the, what was used or motive and those sorts of things. So then you're denying that there was an assault-style weapon. Any other questions? Chief, uh, you recall the last time uh, that a wheeling officer has discharged his or her weapon in the line of duty? Um, I do not. But what I can tell you is that, um, you know, we do have protocols in place. Um, that officer will be placed on administrative leave. Um, our internal affairs, our Office of Professional Standards will most likely adopt the criminal investigation once that, once that is complete. What are the conditions of the people that were taken to the hospital? I, I don't know. If anybody else wants to be involved, if anybody wants to answer those types of questions, I'm, I'm not going to get can we ask a question of the U.S. Attorney? Sure. Uh, Mr. Ellenfeld, the, were you in your office when this occurred? I was. Uh, could could you get over by the microphones, please, Would sir. you be able to maybe describe a little bit uh, some of your recollections of what happened? Sure. Uh, our office was, uh, we were working, uh, not fully staffed due to the, the government shutdown. Uh, we uh, heard gunshots outside the federal building, uh, windows, uh, of, of some of my folks were hit. Uh, at least one window was hit, uh, possibly more. Uh, I think that's still gonna be part of the investigation as to how many uh, shots were fired, how many windows were hit, which windows were hit. Uh, I know just from my own walking through the office, observed uh, a gunshot um, through uh, one of the criminal AUSAs, 
even though Cindy's office is on the second floor. Your office faces that street, it was not hit? Uh, my, my, my office office was not hit, no. Okay. Uh, to my knowledge, um, in fact, I haven't been back in there actually since all of this happened, so uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it wasn't hit. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of uh, fear and uh, anxiety, and uh, uh, folks were, were scared about what was happening, uh, and so we have internal protocols that we put into place as far as getting everybody into a safe area away from windows. And uh, fortunately, the, the law enforcement officers outside of the building um, made sure everything was all right for us to allow our employees to go home. Uh, their vehicles, obviously, are still there. They have been evacuated. The building is empty now, as, other than just normal? Uh... The, the building has been evacuated other than those who have to stay back in relation to, to the investigation. Okay, again, at 8 p.m. this evening at this location, and at that time, maybe um, you know, we will be uh, briefing the FBI who has arrived not too awful long ago, and uh, there is, like I mentioned, a very fluid investigation ongoing, and um, we have a lot of work to do. It's gonna be a long night, uh, but we will try to get more detail to you at 8 p.m. Um, Just one more three people injured? Philip, I don't know. Um, I have not been briefed on those injuries. I know that other than the gunman, there are no serious injuries. I can say that. And you said the gunman was a former Army police officer? And I will confirm that. Resigned in July of 2000. Did not, I'm sorry. I did not introduce anyone. I asked that they would introduce themselves as they had come to the podium if they had anything they want to ask. My name is Gary Gaskins. I'm the U.S. Marshal for the Northern District of West Virginia. Just spell your name, sir, please. G-A-S-K-I-N-S. Gaskins. Okay. And just to follow up on your, on your question about the injuries, we had two court security officers uh, that were taken to the hospital. They were treated with minor injuries and have been released. Minor would be breaking glass, most likely, or? Yes. Can minor injuries, obviously, from, from the incident, yes. Is there a third person? We had two court security officers that were transported and treated, yes. Court security officers, were they armed, the ones who were at the at the metal detector? They are armed. They are armed. Yes. Okay. Gary, I saw Chad Simpson walking from the scene with a, uh, looked like, looked like to be an assault rifle, but it had a, uh, a wooden uh, handle on it. Do U.S. Marshals carry any kind of weapon with a wooden handle on it? Uh, they're, they're given certain weapons, so we'll just we'll leave it at that. Again, sir, can you just tell us, there is no threat to the Hill community, correct? As of right now, the chief indicated, and we're all in agreement that the federal building in that area and all was secure from, from this incident. Do you know, was the gunman only firing at the building or people in particular? I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Chief, okay. I have a question real quick. Maybe. Um, obviously, you didn't know uh, if it is the officer in question who has been identified. Have you had a chance to look into the officer who resigned in July of 2000? Any, any indication in his personnel record that you're aware of that would maybe lead to something like this? Okay. I have not reviewed that resignation letter or file. Um, obviously, folks were very much in the beginning of this. It's going to take a lot of time. I can't guarantee how much detail we'll give you at 8 o'clock either. We'll do our best. That's all I can offer. One more question. Has the government shut down affected in any way the ability to respond to a situation like this? I, uh, I can't answer that, but I'll just say this. Law enforcement, yes. you know, I responded from Elm Road, and there were so many law yes. enforcement officers there, and I would like to say this at this time. And I say it all the time. Police officers, law enforcement officials run into that fire when everyone else is running away. And as far as I'm concerned, those officers that responded today are heroes in my book. So I'll leave it at that. We'll be back at 8 o'clock. Hopefully we'll have some more additional information, okay? Thank you.